All right. Okay, morning everybody. My name's Rich Hummel. I'm with Sage Tree Solutions, and my talk is entitled Learning Drupal Fast. Like I said earlier, I don't know how many of you might have overheard, but I'm not going to talk about the actual like blocks or theming. I'm going to be talking about principles on how to learn blocks and theming and custom module development uh, faster, right? <clears throat> and there's a graphic floating on the internet that talks about the learning curve of Drupal, and it's this one. You see all the people just being laid by the wayside. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot of market demand for folks that know Drupal, and so hopefully this talk will give you a framework so you can uh, learn Drupal faster. All right. Okay. Um, my company is Sage Tree Solutions. We are down in San Diego in the Gas Lamp District. We do enterprise Drupal. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Stop by the table for a raffle if you drop off your business cards. We have a couple iTunes gift cards that we're going to be raffling off tomorrow, and also a $100 Best Buy um, card in addition to, to those pens. So if you missed out on a pen, uh, stop by and say hi. And also, uh, we're looking for a senior engineer or architect. So if you know anybody that might be interested and is also in the San Diego area, uh, we're looking for folks. All right. <clears throat> so really, my talk is based on this book. It's like a Cliff Notes for Josh Kaufman's uh, The First 20 Hours. Has anybody heard of this book? Seen this book out there? Okay. So um, <clears throat> basically all the principles in this book uh, can be applied to anything that you might want to learn. If you want to learn how to uh, make Drupal sites better, they can definitely apply in here. Um, but if you want to also use these principles to learn windsurfing or how to play the guitar or the piccolo, uh, you could use these principles too. But I'm going to be talking it within, about it within the context of learning Drupal. Okay. So rapid skill acquisition is um, composed of these basic four steps. Um, you know, Malcolm Gladwell a couple of years ago established this rule of thumb that it takes 10,000 hours to become a world-class whatever, um, you know, to develop a world-class talent. Um, the thing is, not everybody wants to or needs to be world-class, you know. Um, if you want to be, uh, improve your golfing game, you know, you don't necessarily need to be the next Tiger Woods, right? It could be just enough to be able to play 18 holes without making a fool out of yourself, right? And so um, that whole barrier towards achieving that level of competency is a lot lower if, you know, you uh, set, set your goals a little bit lower, right? <clears throat> All right. Um, before I get into the principles and, uh, of rapid skill acquisition, there's a couple different things uh, that I want to go over with the rest of vocabulary. Uh, first is skill acquisition, which is the ability to effectively and effectively apply and execute that skill, actually like building a site, right? Um, you can actually do it. Learning is actually learning about the skill. Um, it's, uh, it's valuable, learning about it is valuable, valuable because it helps you self-correct and um, self-edit when you're actually practicing the skill. So the, uh, the, the easiest analogy is Spanish class. In high school, I took four years of Spanish class I learned about vocabulary, conjugation, pluperfect tense, and all that fun stuff. Um, so I learned about that particular skill, right? But then when it came to actually having a conversation with somebody that speaks Spanish, it was very low. I could barely, you know, I could say, hola, como estas? Muy bien, gracias, right? Um, so, so that's the difference between skill acquisition being the actually effectively perform that skill and then learning about it. But when I did try to speak with a person in Spanish, you know, I'd know, know okay, I need to use habla versus hablas because, you know, I want to be respectful, right? So it, it, learning is valuable. And then there's training, which is actually once you've acquired that skill, just practicing it so you improve your, uh, your ability uh, with the skill. Okay. So these are the 10 principles of rapid skill acquisition. Um, like I said, they can apply to anything that you might want to learn. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be talking about within the context of Drupal. All right. 
So the first one is choose a lovable project, right? Maybe it's a family website. Maybe you're a big anime fan. Uh, maybe you're part of a club or association. Um, uh, maybe you're really passionate about your local Drupal users, users group. Wherever your passion lies, if you find a lovable project, um, it'll help give you that incentive to learn that particular skill. In this case, Drupal, right? For me, um, it was uh, when I first got into web development, it was my fraternity's website. And that's what uh, got me into the whole web development world. So uh, find a lovable project. When you are actively learning, focus your energy on one skill at a time. No multitasking, because like with Drupal, just looking at the, the schedule, there's a lot of different topics. Theming, module development, search, mobile. You know, just focus your energy on one skill at a time. Right? That way you can minimize the number of moving parts and make sure you really understand that component of the whole Drupal ecosystem. All right. Next one is d define your target performance level. You know, that's to me when, uh, especially in uh, in projects for clients, you know, what's the minimum viable product? What's the smallest or the least amount of features or functionality that you need to implement or need to see to be able to say, hey, that's good enough? Okay, <clears throat> that's to say, you know. It's uh, if if it's a big project you want to build this big huge like say e-commerce catalog site maybe the first step is just let's just get that product detail page looking right and then you could go on to the views and then just expand from there right but define your target performance level uh, the next one is deconstruct the skill into sub skills a lot of these you know are probably com common sense stuff that you you're already aware of but I think it's good to uh, just have them all out and just understand like how all these different principles apply when you're actually learning a skill, right? Um, deconstruct the skill and sub skills. It's also the same thing we do when we're actually trying to solve a client's problem. Break the bigger problem into smaller problems, right? It's a lot more digestible, and um, when you do that, you have a lot better chance of uh, finding somebody else that's solved that problem out there and uh, made a module or wrote, written a blog post on how to, how to, how to solve it, right? You know, uh, truth be told, probably 80% of whatever you're building um, has already been built before, right? And it's that last 20%, which is why clients hire you because they can't find anything that does exactly what they need. And so, um, and try to, try to identify, you know, break it into smaller smaller um, sub-skills or, or problem sets and then you can find a lot and learn a lot on how, how those things were solved and you can just put them together to solve the bigger problem. Okay, when you're learning in Drupal, uh, obtain the critical s tools or anything, right? Um, Drush is a key one, you know, as you uh, continue on your, your Drupal learning path, key modules you're going to want to learn, you know, the views, Admin menu, DB log, develop, develop, generate. These are just a couple. Um, usually, when you want to learn the key modules, what's really useful is looking at the the list on the Drupal.org site. There's a list of the uh, most used modules, and uh, it's really useful to just look at that, and then you can see, you know, these module sets are the most popular ones because they solve a lot of common problem sets, and then it's it's worth looking at those modules uh, to see how they might fit in and solving your problem. You know, I mentioned Drush because that's, if you're into development, you're, it's a huge time saver. Um, then there's tools like Vimium that help you uh, speed up um, uh, just interacting with websites. It's basically shortcut keys for websites. That's what Vimium is. And then there's other tools. If you get into the development stack, there's tools like Eclipse, debugging, uh, uh, actual like doing debugging with xdebug, Firebug Coder, Aqua Developers Desktop. If uh, if you haven't, if you don't have a local environment set up, um, by far, the Aqua Developer Desktop is the easiest way to start playing with Drupal 
um, immediately. Just download it, install it, whether it's Windows or OS X. Um, it's an easy way to get uh, get started and start playing with Drupal really quickly. And if you're on Linux, if you have Linux as a desktop, you could probably do it yourself, right? right. Um, the next one is eliminate barriers to practice. <clears throat> to me, um, that means just like leaving your computer on and just ready so when you sit down, you can just jump into it, you know? Um, there's other things uh, around that, you know, eliminating barriers to practice. Part of that is making dedicated time for practice, just putting on your schedule. When it's actually on your schedule, you know, in your mind, you've made that commitment, okay, this is important enough to make it on my schedule, and I'm going to uh, dedicate uh, this time to, to learn this new skill, right? <clears throat> um, it's really easy. I mean, everybody's busy. We have family. We have work. You know, some of us have kids. Uh, it's really easy uh, to run out of time, but when you put on the schedule, you know, you've made time for this uh, learning so you can acquire these new skills, right? The other one, and the next one is create fast feedback loops. Uh, that means being able to test really rapidly. A lot of times that means just reloading, you know, tweak a CSS file, reload in the browser. Tweak a, a module template file, reload in the browser. Uh, tweak a view, reload in the browser. That's the, the really fast way to do it. Usually what I do is I'll have uh, one browser as an anonymous user like viewing the view that I'm working on and uh, another one logged in as the admin so I can edit the view. I'll just, you know, this one I'll use to edit it and then I can just alt tab and reload on the other one to see if it's, it looks right, right? And so the faster you're able to create these feedback loops, the faster you're going to learn and also the faster you're going to be able to develop. Um, sometimes though, <clears throat> like uh, most common uh, use case in, in, in my experience, like for example when you're using, when you're building an e-commerce site or a multi-step workflow, we have to fill out a lot of forms to get to this last form, like say the checkout. Um, it's really tedious and uh, always filling out your name, credit card number, billing address, shipping address. Um, Selenium is a really nice tool to actually automate that. It's really a, 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 a testing tool, but it does, it does uh, give you that capability to record what you do with a web page and then just play it back. So when you're developing something with a long workflow, uh, you know, where you want to test something that's on like step four of a wizard, that's a really uh, nice tool to be able to just blast through the first couple steps. I'll always having to enter the same information uh, on these on these forms to get to that that last one, right? Uh, practice by the clock in short bursts. Um, you know, that's a very stereotypical thing, uh, image in, in people's minds that that, that coders spend all their time in front of the computer and whatnot and, and get burnt out and have messy hair and big bags under your eyes. Um, it's not really effective, you know? After a while, you just get burned out and then it's, it's kind of like when you're reading a book and then you realize you're reading the same page over and over again. It's like, okay, it's time to put it down, right? And a lot of times, if you just take that, that break, you know, go for a walk, then your brain just starts making these connections. That's when the neurons start connecting. And then uh, you'll have that aha moment. And uh, that, that happens actually a lot. You know, I'll, I'll go to sleep really frustrated that I wasn't able to solve this particular problem. But then if you just take a breather and chill out for a while, then, then you know, your brain's just kind of working on the background. You'll, uh, uh, you'll solve that, that, that issue. Um, <coughs> let's see. Uh, one of the techniques that uh, Josh Kaufman uh, recommends is actually working with a timer. You know, we live in an ADD world, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, uh, Facebook, um, is just set up a timer, 20 minutes, and eliminate any bit, uh, distractions that you can, and just dedicate yourself, I'm just going to focus on this for 20 minutes, and, and that's it. And then that way it uh, gives you a short time span so you can actually just really uh, get into the zone when you're when you're trying to learn something, right? Quantity and speed. In the book, he talks about a pottery class uh, where half of the pottery class 
was graded based on the amount of uh, the actual weight of the pottery that they threw, so the actual volume. And the other half was graded on the quality of it. And so what they discovered is the half that um, was graded on quality, they'd just be sitting there trying to make the perfect pot. But the thing is they only made one pot. Whereas the one that was just judged on volume, how much they could throw, um, you know, 50 pounds or whatever, um, they, the actual quality was a lot better because each time that they threw a pot, you know, they were able to develop those skills on how to learn that faster. Now, how does that translate to when you're trying to learn Drupal? Um, to me, uh, that means uh, finding and testing the different ways to solve a problem. You know? uh, install ADD, uh, Acquia Desktop, set up a sandbox, and then a lot of times, like for example, like with sliders or how to build a particular view or if you want to put the, the nodes on a map, there's a lot of different recipes for there. Set up a sandbox, you know, just try to blast through the recipe real quick and see how it works for you and being able to uh, test out these, uh, these different recipes. You know? but not all of them are going to work, but the good thing is even for the ones that you do work, <clears throat> you're adding that experience to your tool belt, to your, uh, you know, your mental Rolodex. So later on down the way, even though for this particular instance where you're trying to solve a, a problem, it, um, you'll have it in the back of your head. So that might, that might come in really useful later on when you're, uh, when you're trying to um, solve a different problem. Oh, uh, why do I have the drush commands up here? Um, because that's the quickest way to install and activate a module, at least in, in my experience. Um, you know, everybody knows how, well, if you don't, usually when you start Drupaling, uh, you'll download the module to your local, you'll upload it to your, uh, to your Drupal site, then you'll go to the modules, activate that, enable the module, and it takes, it, it takes a while. And that whole thing about being able to test and, and try different things really fast, if you open up a terminal and just type in, say, drush dl views, drush n views, drush cc all, that's clear cache. That just kind of refreshes Drupal's caches to make sure anything stale is refreshed. Um, you know, that takes about eight seconds to do. No, I guess it depends on how fast your internet connection is, right? But um, it'll, it lets you try out a lot of different modules really quickly versus having to go through that, that whole uh, manual process. And uh, like I said, you want to be able to try a lot of things quickly. All right. So those were the, uh, the 10 principles of rapid skill acquisition. And these are the 10 principles for effective learning. Like I said, um, learning is different than skill acquisition. But it's really valuable. Learning is really valuable because it makes your practice more efficient and more effective because you'll, you're able to self-edit and self-correct and increases the value of your practice. Okay, so first one, first principle of learning is research the skill and related topics. It's very similar to the previous slide, just break, break down the skill into smaller sub-skills. You know, there's the theming stack, site building, module development, and there's a lot of other things. If uh, anybody has any questions, like at the end that they're trying um, in particular to learn, you know, keep it in the back of your mind. I think we're going to have time to, you know, if you want, if there's like, say, solar or search, you could uh, talk about that and give you some uh, pointers on the best resources on how to learn that particular topic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Research the skill and related topics. Next one, jump in over your head. You know, uh, when you grow, that's for me. When I learn something new, that's and I, I grow. That's when I kind of get that, that little tingling in the back of that. It's like, cool, I did something. You know, I learned something new. I'm better than I I was yesterday, right? Um, and just get comfortable with it feeling uncomfortable. And then there's this kind of like ambiguous gray area that you don't know, but you know, have faith, have the confidence, 
um, that that gray area will become clear and you'll be able to understand this whatever topic that you're you're uh, learning you know um, identify mental models and mental hooks um, I couldn't really figure out a nice graphic for this one but it's you know it's basically uh, try to figure out a, 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 a metaphor for whatever you're uh, working with for example like with solar uh, that's kind of one of the more advanced topics when you're uh, doing Drupal, how to integrate solar for your uh, Drupal site. You know, you might think of it as basically it's, uh, you know, how, how your website serves up web pages, right? You might think of it as the, the same thing as that. It's just a website that serves up search results, and it's really fast. And so when you identify these men mental hooks and these models where it works uh, on how a particular top uh, technology works like, then um, you start being able to, uh, to uh, forecast or kind of anticipate on what it should do, right? So for example, like with organic groups, okay, so it's a module that helps you uh, manage groups. Right? So there should be something that lets me add members. There should be something that lets me remove members. And so you build up this framework in, in your mind so you can uh, learn it faster. Uh, another one is imagine the opposite of what you want. In the book, he talks about you know, what's the worst case scenario if uh, you're a kayaker. You capsize, right? Um, so to prevent yourself from drowning, uh, you know, some of the key skills that you should probably learn is how to roll, your, roll yourself back up, how to avoid losing your paddle in rough water, uh, learn the safety precautions when kayaking in rough water, and also scouting out the river to avoid problem spots, right? And so uh, that's the worst case scenario with, um, with kayaking. With Drupal, like, what's the worst case scenario uh, for your Drupal site? Maybe an uh, article gets linked to in TechCrunch or something, and your server goes, gets, gets, um, gets bombarded with a lot of traffic. Well, then you might look at scaling technologies like Varnish, Drupal caching, maybe Memcache, uh, and then also troubleshooting skills on how to identify you know, the memory bottlenecks, which processes are the memory hogs, how to restart your server. Right, so that'll give you a nice framework of the key things to learn uh, first. Um, like if you're working on an application, or working on a, a a custom module or something, what's the worst that could happen? Development goes totally out of control, and you have no idea how to solve this client's problem that you thought you would. Maybe identify some people higher in the chain that you could go to um, for for help. Right. Next one is talk to pra practitioners to set expectations. So Drupal Camp LA is an awesome place to connect with people and get that kind of information. Um, when you talk with the you know the pros, they'll they'll be able to give you um, the they'll be able to guide you in your in your the, your learning journey. Right? Uh, it's where you are right now in whatever space, whether you're brand new, you've been doing Drupal for a month versus you've been doing Drupal for three to five years, uh, you know, there's always somebody a step ahead of you. And then the thing that's awesome about the Drupal community is that everybody's willing to share. When I first went to Drupal Camp LA, I was blown away by, by how much awesome information that everybody was really willing and open to share with and just, you know, point me in the right direction. So uh, definitely reach out to the people at these camps. There's your local users groups. They have the monthly meetings. That's a good place to connect with people. Um, Sand Camp's going to be coming up in July, and there's also Bad Camp. I think it's in October. Um, if you're looking for places online, the issue queues around the modules, whatever you're using, that's uh, one place to be able to connect with people. Groups.drupal.org, that's another online space. Um, there's the IRC channels. And also, uh, you'll find a lot of Drupal groups now on Meetup too. Uh, usually, it's the same same people 
in the groups.drupal.org, they're just using Meetup as a different channel to, to reach out to new people. Okay? All right. Next practice in effective learning. Eliminate distractions, you know, whether it's kids, Candy Crush, Netflix. Uh, it's that whole thing with multitasking. It's it's not good. <laughs> I mean, it, it's you know, I've 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 tried to trick myself. So yeah, I could catch a episode of Arrested Development and also work on this web page at the same time. And at the end of it, I just ended up watching another episode of Arrested Development. You know, <laughs> so um, just eliminate all the distractions in your environment. Uh, you know, we live in an ADD culture, and it's really easy to get distracted, especially when you're in, on the internet, because, you know, Yahoo or Facebook is just, you know, alt-tab away, basically, you know, just click on that bookmark, but really, you got to be uh, really disciplined in trying to, trying to avoid that. Um, next one is space repetition and reinforcement for memorization. When I first started working on the slide, I was like, oh, What's really worthy of this slide in the Drupal space? You know, in um, in the book they talk about like with learning languages. You know, you make flashcards for the vocabulary. In the process of making the flashcards, you know, when you're making them, you're learning it, which is good because you know some people have these different modes of learning. Uh, when you're making the flashcards, you're actually doing it, you know, physically and also with visually and also auditory, right? But I mean, like in Drupal. I don't know, what are you going to make flashcards in Drupal about? But then uh, when I thought about it, because Drush, if you haven't learned Drush, unfortunately, Chris Charlton's Drush talk is right now. Uh, try to catch it on um, uh, on the recordings. All the, the sessions are going to be recorded. But uh, actually just knowing the Drush com commands, Drush DL to download a module, Drush CCL to clear cache, that's really useful. And just having those on the tips of your finger uh, will help speed up your development. Um, shortcut keys. Shortcut keys are uh, a huge way to speed up your development. Um, I had another talk on how to uh, develop fast, and basically it's just a talk about shortcut keys. You know, actually having to use the mouse or the trackpad, move your hand over, move the mouse around, click, drag, click. It's a lot slower than being able just to, you know, Command Shift R, Command Shift F, you know. So learning shortcut keys is uh, really good. Um, and then, along with shortcut keys, there's also Vimium, um, which is basically shortcut keys for your browser. And uh, actually, does anybody know what Vimium is? Nobody. Okay. Let me just uh, show you a quick. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so here's a web page, and then does anybody know what Vim is? Vi? I'll cut a couple of you. It's a Unix text editor, and the the it's as a text editor. When you first start, it's impossible to learn. But the nice thing the, about it, but moving the cursors, moving the cursor, and making edits, you don't have to move your fingers off the home keys, so you you don't have to do very much finger movement. And in here, I'm just pressing K to scroll up. J to scroll down, and then the neat thing about it is if when you want to start clicking around, I press F, and it highlights a bunch of more shortcut keys. So if I want to navigate to something else, uh, so I want to go to what's a, I can't say I want to go to all sessions. That's P and S, and it goes to all sessions. It's it's like I'm clicking on that link, and it's a huge. Uh, uh, Way to speed up your your development process, just not using the mouse, right, or, or a trackpad, because <clears throat> that's slow. All right, let's see. Yep. Oh, sorry. So Vimium, uh, thanks for asking that. Um, it is not a Drupal module. It is a Chrome plugin. So on your browser, it's a Chrome plugin. They also have it for Firefox. I don't know if they have it for Safari. Um, I'm Pretty sure they do not have it for Internet Explorer. So, so uh, now Eclipse is a um, is an IDE integrated development environment. So if you're coding, um, that's that's my preferred 
weapon of choice. Um, it's a big Java program used to edit. I mean, it's that's where it started. It was a Java IDE to edit Java programs, but they have PHP um, uh, modules for it, so you can use it to um, edit your PHP. And the nice thing about it is that uh, well, you know it has the syntax highlighting, it has the tool tips, so that way you don't have to remember what all the the, the function signatures are. You know what arguments do do functions take. Um, if you're using it for CSS or HTML, it'll have autocomplete. Like if you start typing in your CSS, uh, border dash background, then colon, then it'll give you all the selections um, that are valid. So that way you don't have to remember, oh, is it, you know, URL equals or URL parens and, and you know, th that kind of stuff. As basically, it helps you not have to remember all that stuff so you could save your mental energy for solving the problem at hand. And then Alfred is a uh, it's a program launcher. So instead of having to open up Finder, go to Applications, Launch, Chrome, I just do Control uh, Spacebar and then CHR and then I just press Enter and then I'll launch Chrome. Or if I want to pick up somebody in my uh, in my uh, my contact list. And I could access that really quickly. It's just a lot faster. Um, also, the nice thing about it, I use this actually a lot. It comes in with uh, a calculator. So if you want to figure out whatever the pixel margins should be, it's a built-in calculator. You could just start typing. That's Alfred. Uh, so just knowing those those keyboard shortcuts, that's worth knowing just, you know, making that, committing that to your muscle memory. That's, that's worth knowing. All right, create scaffolds and checklists. That's the next principle. Um, so these are great. Again, it's just another way to get stuff that you should do out of your head so you don't have to think about it and make sure it's done right every time. So checklists, for example, you might have a deployment checklist, stuff like, you know, turn on the CSS and JavaScript caching. Uh, make sure the views UI is turned off, that, that views UI module is disabled. Make sure the environment indicator is turned off. Uh, and make sure, like, the, the PayPal information when you go into production, maybe that's set to, make sure that's set to the production values and not the sandbox values. Scaffolds are structures to help make sure that your approach is done the exact way every time. Um, you know, they, uh, they use example for uh, basketball free throws, you know. Bounce, dribble the ball three times, square up, you know, launch and then uh, make sure you snap the wrist, right? Um, so it's done every time, so it's consistently. In uh, web development space, um, I think uh, some of the ways that you could use this concept is maybe like your hosting. <coughs> with your hosting, maybe you use Pantheon for your hosting environment, so that way your development environment's the same with every project. You don't have to spend or waste time learning new uh, new intricacies of different server setups. Um, one of the if you're in the bigger uh, projects, people are using Vagrant or Chef to build their development environments, so it's exactly the same as the production environments. And that's really nice because like one of the things with enterprise Drupal development when you're working with big teams, some people might use MAMP, some people might use WAMP for their development, some other people might be developing on a Linux box. And there's all these little differences which it works fine for them on their local development environment, but when you put it on the dev server, you, all these things kind of spiral out of control and just create a lot of uh, wasted time that you have to spend resolving these little little conflicts. Okay, next is make test predictions. So especially when you get into software and web development, you become a scientist, right? You use a scientific method hundreds if not thousands times a day. You know, you make a hypothesis, you test it. You guess, you check, right? Um, this kind of dovetails with the quantity principle. The faster that you can guess and check, the faster that you'll learn, right? And so um, I think that's that's a really useful way to approach development. You know, 
say you want to uh, build a catalog page of products. How will I know that this is complete? Okay, I'm going to see a 3x4 grid of image thumbnails at this URL. And all those images will link to the node pages. You know? um, how will I know if this view is going to work? You know, uh, if I see, uh, you know, if I go into the views editor, modify it, and make sure that the the link goes to the right URL, you know, stuff like stuff like that. Uh, the faster that you can guess and check, the faster you learn. Okay, last one is honor your biology. Right, um, everything is in service to everything else. Right, um, you know, there's work, there's our personal lives. Um, there's our, our physical health, you know, mental health, spiritual, and it's important to, to be right in all these different areas because when you're out of balance in one, then it's going to mess up your work or whatever other area. So, for example, if my personal life is all jacked up, say I'm having really, you know, uh, I don't know, if my personal life is jacked up, I'm not going to go to work being able to focus. And so, you know, I think... Uh, you have to make sure you honor that, and that way, when you're at work, you can be focused at work. When you're with your family, you can be focused on your family, and and so on. All right. And those are all my slides at Sage Tree. And one of our our core values is pursue growth and learning. Hopefully, you've been able to learn a couple principles about how you can learn uh, the the whole Drupal ecosystem a little bit faster. Um, and that's it. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Yeah. Well, that's all you were mentioning about uh, developers and different roles, right? Um, and and okay. Um, so how about most of the developers? Okay, so the question was that a lot of different developers use different desktop development environments like LAMP, WAMP, and the, what was our... Uh, answer to that. So basically at Sage Tree, we all use the Acquia Dev Desktop. Um, you can use other systems like uh, WAMP or, or MAMP, but for us it was the easiest. I mean, it's really, you know, uh, they, they did a really great job just making it easy to set up new Drupal sites on your local machine um, really quickly. Before, you know, I had to set up, you know, I had to configure Apache, had to set up a MySQL database, have to set up uh, the host file to make sure that the DNS is, is right for my local environment. And uh, AD, ADD, Acquia Dev Desktop, is a, a, just automates that. There's a, a wizard. You just fill in um, the, 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 what you want to call your local sandbox, and then it's done. So it's really easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Acquia Dev Desktop is free, too. Yeah, so... Yeah. So I want to let everyone know there's also other meetups if you want to get into the learning chat or the top of the vagrant. Mm -hmm. Like in the LA area, we've got a DevOps meetup that's on a lot of that stuff. So if you're looking to learn some of these other tools, meetup is a great place to look to see where Absolutely. other groups oh. that are going to come Yeah, thank you for that. So uh, just to capture that here, uh, definitely check out the meetups to connect with other groups or more specialized groups. Uh, in the whole Drupal ecosystem. One other great way to learn is uh, pick a partner. At Sage Tree, some, uh, some of us uh, just decided to meet on Tuesday mornings to learn JavaScript. And just having that accountability partner, you know, because if, you, if you're by yourself, it's easy to say, oh, I'm just going to sleep in, you know. It's not that important. But when there's somebody, you know, you know that somebody's going to be waiting there. It's like a workout partner, you know, somebody to spot you or, or whatnot. Um, that'll, that'll help keep you motivated, stay on track, and... Uh, Learn, learn whatever skills you're trying to learn. So, okay. yeah. There's one more thing I noticed, and this surprises me. I've been encountering some of the people who only have one monitor at my job. Oh, yeah. And it shocks the hell out of me because it's not a large monitor. So, quite often, <laughs> having a second monitor will increase your productivity between 8 and 90%. So, if you imagine, if it only increases at 1%, you'll get an ROI of a month. Yeah. You always spend 150 bucks. Yeah, that's a, a great tip too. Thank you for that. 
So get yourself a second monitor because the more screen real estate, the less you have to context switch and you can just kind of like glance over at something, the faster you'll be. So that's a good tip. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody.